number number one one three one hundred and thirteen. Hello, uh, I'm representing Controlling Cognosco Company, uh, specialized for implementation of the function of controlling in the private and public sectors. After becoming a member of the European Union, Croatia has accepted the basic principles concerning the legal acquirements regarding free market competition strategy Europe 2020, whose main aim is to modernize the public sector as the public service for citizens, economy and investors. The interrelation between investments tax, uh, from taxpayers and the benefits that the public sector should deliver proves to be a very complex issue. The function of controlling, which deals with successful management in the, in the process of developing management mechanisms, plays a very import, important role here. Given the past track record, we are aware how scarce the know-how about controlling is within our public sector. Our question is the following. Is there a possibility to pay more attention to the hands-on experience of transfer of practical knowledge and experience from countries that manage to significant, significantly improve their public sectors using controlling functions, especially means Germany and Austria, because without the practical transfer of know-how and skills in that area, we will not be able to achieve the main goal, the modernization of public sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Number 357. President, as we compete in the global economy, best skills have a comparative advantage on the rest in terms of productivity and innovation. The EU skills agenda rightly addresses many issues dealing with education and training, with, with initiatives that aim to shape the European labour market of the future. Institution collaboration and societal engagement are the key to address the challenging issues. Priority lies in having a labor, labor force which is well equipped with digital and STEM skills, ongoing professional development and active aging. Enterprises have a role to play. Through quality apprenticeships, our youth can benefit from a smooth transition between school and the world of work. On the job, experiences show, should become further integrated in the educational process. Finally, we need to attract high-skilled workers from third countries through facilitation of entry process. The revision of the Blue Card Directive is the right approach, yet the flexibility of national schemes should be retained. Upon Malta's forthcoming presidency of the European Union, our chamber, of which I am vice president, is committed to bring these issues we are discussing today to the forefront of, of the European agenda via our government. I invite you to consult us during our presidency for our support. Thank you. Thank you. Number 720, 720. Wait, wait, wait a second, you have no mic. 7.20. There's no microphone at 7.20? Yes. Hello, yes. I'm representing Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce. SMEs and the education system speak very different languages, and often there's not much appetite for them to speak to each other at all. Countries like Germany and Austria are making strides in overcoming these issues through increased intermediation and employer-led skills. A scheme set up by Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce in 2013 attempted to replicate this by speaking directly to businesses, allowing them to design bespoke training courses and then taking these requirements straight to training providers. This scheme in its first year delivered more apprenticeships than Greater London and over a quarter of the UK total. If such a small-scale scheme can be so successful, is it not time for a wider policy supporting <coughs> higher levels of intermediation and putting the needs of ordinary businesses back at the heart of the skills agenda? Thank you. Number 302, 302. Good afternoon. My name is Angiadis. 
I'm from a very small town in Greece, which is close to Delphi, which in ancient times was really the very center of the country. One of the uh, topics at the moment for European chambers has to do with vocational training in schools, and especially in primary education. In our country as well, we have children of uh, refugees and migrants uh, found across the country. And across all countries, prizes have to be uh, awarded to the uh, smallest companies or or, pr or, um, pre or grants have to be given so that they can promote new technologies and so that companies can create opportunities for people and for learning. This is all we have left, information. Chambers are very apt at uh, distributing information. We need to make the most of that and get that information out there to our, our the youngest in our societies who would like to see better prospects for the future. And we must also assist young people who are suffering uh, a great deal at the moment. Thank you. Number 744, 744. Mrs. Engel, I come from Germany and I am a manager of a BMW showroom in the Ruhrgebiet, the Ruhr area. I am absolutely convinced that when we come to when it comes to education and training, particular vocational training, continued training, has to be seen as a solution to some of the problems and tasks we face in, in Europe. Without education and training, there are no professional opportunities or jobs and if there is no education training then you have no economic success either we need qualified workers and they are absolutely decisive when it comes to the competitiveness of our companies and obviously it is absolutely fundamental for the european economy from my own experience then work-based learning is can help those countries that have very high unemployment uh, it can help help solve the problem and uh, we would be very willing to transfer and share our experience with these countries ultimately Europe has to become a single job market so that we the uh, jobs are, uh, the people are sent to the right place at the right time a mobility rate of 2% is totally unsatisfactory but obviously we are very often uh, asked how we can help sometimes we have to offer traineeship places in our companies to those from uh, abroad and uh, i think we have to do this so that we can spread the aspect of culture as well thank you number 11. my name is Mar my name is marta schultz i'm uh, a business a leader in the tourism sector in austria for us well-trained people are very important and at the moment in our company we're training people uh, in 13 different jobs however it's very important to make sure that we have uh, labor market relevant skills which means um, promoting that the spirit of enterprise and we i'd like to introduce an austrian uh, company we have a, a modular system uh, for all um, uh, levels of learning in austria and the good, uh, the good thing is that uh, 33,000 young people in Austria have already received this certificate. And the European Commission has already has praised uh, the example of Austria. Thank you very much. Number 2020, by 2030, 50% of jobs across Europe will be related to STEM. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering and maths. Now let's talk about our current education system across Europe at present and why it is not fit for purpose. Our schools are teaching our children today in two-dimensional ways, through textbooks. It's not engaging them. 
And the reason for that is because our brains are wired to think in 3D, in three-dimensional ways. What's the solution to this? The solution is very simple. It's educational play. It's bringing children's worlds into the classrooms. It's teaching kids through toys and games, things that they're used to playing with each and every day of their lives. This will engage them, and this will impact on their future careers by engaging them in areas such as science, technology, engineering, and maths at the critical ages of between five and 13. That's the solution for the next generation. But what about the current generation? Our school, our school leavers, our early school leavers, and apprenticeships are the solution to youth unemployment across Europe today. But our apprenticeships are not fit for purpose either. Our apprenticeship, apprenticeships need to be adapted to the current needs of local industry in each and every one of our member states. They need to be adapted in terms of the duration from four years maybe to one, two and three years. So that's what the plan is in relation to dealing with our youth unemployment today. Thank you. Number 451, 451, oh, 459, I'm sorry, 459. Have I taken incorrectly? Okay. Now, uh, number 234. No, 450. We go. Push. Oui. Bonjour. Yes, good evening, Mr. Karizit. I have a company based in Limoges, and it's a European company. I think that as soon as possible, we have to integrate young people into the whole value chain in the company, but not only young people, but also teachers. The teachers, I think, have to uh, get an idea of just how complex all our processes are, but then our politicians as well, because I think often the politicians forget that they are distancing um, us from the most fundamental value, which is integration, and they ignore this and distance, them, distance themselves from it through the laws they create. 459. 450 is my number. Is that the correct number? Uh, Herr Präsident, yeah. before my Zeit... Be President, before my time starts, I just want to ask you whether there is uh, air conditioning in here because the room is becoming very warm. So, my, my, name is Ali Tasti. my name is Ali Tasti. I come from Germany. I have a medium-sized company. And I've also been a vice president uh, in the, my region, which is based around Frankfurt. It, when we have youth unemployment, when companies can't find qualified uh, employees, something's not right. That means that on the one hand, we have unemployment, youth unemployment, and on the other side, we have a, a, a shortage of labor. Europe depends on technology, on selling its technology, on exporting technology, and that's something that we can only achieve if we have a, a specially trained employees, a workforce. I think that's very, very important for the community to ensure that we have a strong community in Europe. And that's why the EU must do everything possible to ensure that in the future we have sufficient numbers of qualified workers. Thank you. Number 36, 36. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, yeah, I see on one hand we have uh, five kinds of uh, mismatching and on the other hand we have also a mis mis mismatching in the member states from the available jobs. Uh, first, five kinds of mismatch like I see it, it's a skill shortage, qualification uh, mismatch, over or under qualification, a skill gap and over or under skilling. So on the other hand, I said it's also a mismatch of the availability in the member states of the jobs. What does I mean? We, in Belgium, we need more nurses than in Portugal. So how can we have the solution? So I think we have uh, to have a collaborative, collaborative uh, strategy on the long term. And what's necessary here, and for me crucial, is that we have a common language. 
And with this, I want to say a second common language. I will not express myself which language, I will not dare to say, but that everybody is using his first language, his cultural heritage, but that everybody then understands that a nurse who's working in, in Belgium can speak in English. And why I say long term? Because if my grandmother, who never learned English, she cannot understand. So it's a long term solution. Thank you. Number 621, 621. I'm Eleanor, entrepreneur from Germany. And um, considering the um, debate on digitalization that we're also having, I think there is something really important missing in this debate here, namely the vast opportunities that also are in this whole uh, thing. Namely, in parts of Germany, we have almost zero unemployment. That means companies cannot grow because they can't find um, um, labor, they can't find um, skilled people. And lots of the solutions that we discuss, discuss require migration. But this is not something that is absolutely necessary in a today's world. Because there are so many jobs, like marketing, social media marketing, web development, programming, that can be done remote and people could stay home, at home and within their countries and would be, bring a huge benefit for those places where there are jobs and where there's work that cannot be done and where are, there are people who are unemployed. But what that requires is that there is training on those relevant areas and I believe that it's a huge benefit, win-win for both sides. Number 464, 464. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Zaitar from, uh, I represent Polish Halal Institute and I came from Poland. We all agree that employees should be trained, but we find difficulties and constraints in our market, which, which is halal market, which represents about 10% from uh, the European market and 35% from the worldwide market. But there is a lack of uh, legislations and a lack of laws. So we find constraints and difficulties to train our employees. And if we don't control this market, we cannot uh, train the employees. And as you know, this market rises 20% every year. So I, my question is, uh, will you uh, check or will you uh, try to find laws and legislations to organize this uh, market and to protect consumers and well-organized uh, companies? Thank you. Number 641, 641. Yes, thank you very much. I had actually prepared a question for another session. I actually uh, am an entrepreneur in the islands, but anyway, I'll, I, as I said, I do come from the, the islands and I do have experience with a network. This is a network of uh, island-based chambers of commerce, if you will. And I think it is important to say that uh, Europe is not just flat, i.e. basically what, you, what, it, what I'm trying to say is that listening to the colleagues, um, they have problems, but if you come from an insular region, the problems are multiplied. In very many countries, in all sorts of regions, there is uh, human capital, there is a lot of potential. But you have to add other aspects to this. Uh, you have to ask, add other skills as well. And uh, in our area, it's difficult for us. And we really need help and support so that the potential that we have, the human capital, uh, can be trained and gain other skills, for example, in tourism, but also uh, acquire other, like industrial skills. And I know that in February 2016, a resolution was adopted within the European Parliament 
And the idea is that the member states, the Committee of Regions, uh, and, uh, well, uh, it's a plea to all of these institutions to help out. Okay. Now, I know that many of you would be disappointed, but we need to close here the interventions and uh, go for the voting session. Uh, please show the first of the questions that would be voted on the screen. Should work-based learning be integral to all initial vocational education and training programs? The voting session is open. I know that the session has been long, but you seem to be very slow in voting now. <laughs> okay, the voting session closes now. And the results are almost everyone believes that yes, that should be integrated. Thank you. Question number two. Would you be willing to host a refugee in your business as a trainee or apprentice? Please vote. Ah, this is much faster. <laughs> 